Paso a Paso <laughs> Podcast. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Paso a Paso Podcast, where we uh, discuss uh, things related to families, community, early childhood, and beyond. Um, and thanks for listening. Today we have a wonderful guest and someone who we have not heard before on this program. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Pamela Pereira, or Pereira, I guess as some <laughs> people call me. Uh, I am a media educator, and I have been um, educating youth and adults around media-based topics for over 20 years. So currently, I am the New Mexico chapter chair for Media Literacy Now. So I, I advocate for media literacy initiatives um, across the state and organize people around media literacy initiatives. I also run my own company called Media Savvy Citizens. And our mission is to help youth and adults with understanding, uh, positive participation and meaningful media interaction for all learners. So that could take form in, uh, in many ways. You know, we sometimes do talks for the public education department or we work with parents or we work with a lot of our work has been focused with teachers and professional development and training. And then we also work with youth and different workshops and things like that. I'm also the education director, the new education director for Two Kids One. So under all of those hats, oh, and actually, <laughs> I'm sorry. Wow, I'm a busy person. I am also teaching at um, UNM Taos. I'm a adjunct instructor for UNM Taos. And so uh, under all those hats, um, I do some kind of media focused work. Well, we're going to talk about some of that today. Uh, thanks so much for finding the time in your in your busy schedule and all your positive work to um, be here on this program today. Um, some place that we thought might be good to start, given that this is an early childhood podcast, is in the relationship between uh, young children and media, screens and things like that. It's something that I think all parents are aware of as something, or many parents are aware of, to be uh, thoughtful about, but the ways in which those things are handled are very varied. Um, where do you think is a good place to discuss or start to, that discussion, Pamela? Um, personally, I think parenting classes is the first place before the children are born so that there is a plan and a mental preparation for what's to come <laughs> with uh, media and children. Um, I think it's important for, um, for, for parents to specifically understand, you know, what what it means to grow up with, with media. And when I'm talking about media, I'm talking about, um, and I, it's always important to define it because I think people get different perspectives, right? Which is um, computers, tablets, the device and the things in the device, like all the different platforms that um, children would interact with, like say social media or, um, you know, videos or TV or any, Anything that involves a communication that is not face to face, mm -hmm. which is um, which is almost all through a medium of either a computer or a radio, a tablet, you know, some kind of device, right? So, um, and it's you know, and it, it involves a lot of different components. So that's how I um, define media. You know, it really takes a whole village, right, to figure out, like, how do we navigate this environment? And as we're moving with this environment, it's moving faster than us, you know. Um, it's constantly shifting. We're now moving in a, in a time where we're going to be living more with artificial intelligence, AI, and more virtual reality type stuff. And so there's a lot, of, a lot to, like, figure out. I guess is yeah. what it comes down to, you know, whether it's a um, like a family media plan or media plans that are specific to children and um, or whether it's, you know, talking about like how early should you be introducing devices to um, kids, like how, how many hours should they be on online? Um, how might, you know, this, uh, my, you know, the children interacting with whatever media impact that child, what is the impact onto that child? So uh, 
two-year-old watching an R-rated film, mm. for instance, what would be the impact of that? Or even a PG-13, right? So there's, like I said, there are a lot of different perspectives and components, you know, depending on what we want to discuss sure. <laughs> um, as far as like, where do we start, you know, because that's really the, that's really the, the question of today, right? How do we start with this huge encompassing, all encompassing um, idea of media, right? And, you know, how often um, should children be interacting with these devices? Like, what is okay and not okay um, to do? Uh, how might this impact certain people? How might, um, you know, there are, I guess there are a lot of questions to ask around that. You know, how young should a child be when they start interacting with a device? I mean, there's, there's so much to say. And, yeah. you know, and I even start, and the reason why, and I'm going to bring it back to what I started with as far as parents and early childhood, right? And even at birth, there has been research out there that um, discusses eye contact mm. and the lack of eye contact be, be, and, and how our culture is shifting and how mothers and parents are actually like looking at their devices more than they're like interacting with their children sometimes. And so, um, you know, thinking as far as, as far as early as that, right. When this infant is born, you know, what do we know or not know about the media, right. And its impact and how is that? So if a parent or, you know, a caretaker is taking care of, a, of an infant and the infant learns from eye contact. We have evolved to look, you know, to, to learn by seeing and doing, right? And so that is a mimic, right? And mimesis. And so um, if this child is not really getting that eye contact with the parent, is it, you know, how is that shifting how they interact in the world? Yeah. And how they learn, how they empathize, and all of those things, which is kind of like a domino effect. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're so, I mean, you, you started off talking about parents, uh, you know, essentially having education before the, the child is born. Um, and then how difficult it's going to be to figure out, well, where do we start on this topic? Because there is so much going on, as you mentioned a lot of. Um, what are some of your thoughts as far as finding that balance between? Uh, engaging your child in screen time and videos and technology so that they have a sense of it and awareness of it, but not overdoing it so that it's a, a crutch you're using all the time. I mean, that's one way that I think of it anyway, but I'm not sure what you think as far as that topic and, and educating the public based on your research and knowledge. Um, so every family will do what they do. Right. So it's not like necessarily like my place to tell people what they should or shouldn't do, but it's important to know, um, say, some of those consequences. Right. So there's research out there as far as media time, for instance. And if we if we discuss media time, it's um, like what are children doing? Right. When they're online, when they're doing media time, like what is the content? So it's like the content, um, the context and time, you know, would imp is going to impact a child. Um, sometimes the context might take place as far as like media in the bedroom. So there are a lot of there's a lot of information of no media in the bedroom. Um, because that tends to, there's, you know, there's like some hiding and things like that, right? Um, there are also other things like addiction, like we don't, there is a real thing called internet addiction. And now they have rehab centers for internet addiction. And so we don't want to create a situation where a child only knows how to interact on the internet or online and doesn't really know what to do outside of that. And therefore they will throw fits. And then the parents don't want to hear the parent, the kids screaming and yelling and whatever. And, and so they hand the kid a device and, um, but then is it going to be, is it kind of causing or setting the stage for, you know, for, for that kind of situation. And so I think, you know, as far as balance, um, there is data out there and I, I can't recall exactly there's like a certain amount of time per 
certain age, um, you know, as far as like how much, you know, kids should do. Um, so that, you know, that's real there. It's important for, um, to, to think about the whole child, right? When we think about a whole child or a whole person, we can function in society in different ways, right? So part of that might be we're, having some quiet contemplation time, right? Or playing with mud or looking outside and looking away like that is another um, consequence would be like eyesight, right? So um, being able to look away from a screen and look outside and be outside and learn about the earth and the wind and, you know, um, all that kind of stuff. So that's important for creating a whole child, being able to carry a conversation that's not necessarily through a device, being able to make eye contact, you know, all of those things when they're having a conversation, um, are important, right? Um, Music. We've learned so much through music and singing. Um, that's that's also important. So, you know, I guess it really comes down to, you know, what what is too much. Um, these are questions that we all should think about and reflect as a, you know, as a community of parents, as a community of educators, and um, as a community of grandparents and citizens of society. And there, you know, we we've embraced these technologies, but we haven't really taken so much time to take a step back, to just look and, and observe and and understand, like what, how my, you know, what what the impacts may be. Yeah, it sounds like being proactive and engaged with not only uh, when your child has access to media and screen time. Um, but what they're doing while they're utilizing it sounds to be something that you're sharing is very important. Yes. <laughs> and I'm giving a lot of examples, you know, as far as like, you know, different scenarios, because there are different age groups, of course. And, you know, when we're talking about early childhood, there's a lot of information as far as like, there are th- so I don't want to just talk about the negative things. I also want to say there's a lot of positive, there are a lot of positive things um, that come out, you know, that, are, that with media, right? So we've seen through this pandemic how we were able to um, live in community still, a different kind of community, but still like generate a community, a sense of community by being connected online through social media channels or kids being able to play video games or other social um, apps and programs where they're being social. And so that has been important during an isolation, say, period. Um, so there are positive things, like I said, that learning games where Um, students or kids, you know, can learn with, can have specific help um, gaining different skills, like whether it might be, you know, a a reading skill or a, um, you know, just different skill building, I guess. Are there any last thoughts you'd like to leave listeners with as far as uh, the topic of of media and and children or, or I guess as well their their own um, awareness of what their relationship with media and their phones are as we parent others or continue to grow ourselves? Um, I would suggest um, that there's a lot of information out there online. Um, I did a talk for the public education department on parenting and media, and I think there's a there's like a link in parenting and learning. Um, and there's a link on my, on the media savvy citizens website under highlights because, or under past events or events or something like that, where parents can like enroll in that, in that discussion for that discussion. Um, there, there's a lot of information out there and, you know, I'm happy to be available for people if we want to, you know, keep talking about this and keep discussing it and keep brainstorming what we can do, what, you know, what could be done. And, you know, and, um, and we actually have, and just to put a plug in here for two kids, one, we actually have really cool, this is more of a, on a digital production end of things but we have a true kids one is doing a series of like um digital production media intensives and a journalism program and and different things like that so it would be true kids one the number one dot org and that's their website to check out the programs that um starting that are starting like right around the corner i think they start next week 
Cool. Yeah, thanks, Pamela. And, and real quick, if you don't mind touching on it, I, I can't help but interpret that in some ways maybe your role now with True Kids One, the uh, the local youth focused you know media creation organization, um, hopes to create you know I guess what I'd maybe call thoughtful media or engaged media. Is that is that part of uh, what might have uh, drew you to to working with them? Um, I just love discussing this topic, um, helping youth and adults, you know, with <laughs> media, everything is really, um, it is, it is moving towards students, like giving them skills to know how to um, really linking them to resources that help them understand how to tell stories, understand the impact of stories, understand, you know, um, how film works or how audio works and edit. So it's more of a digital at this point has been focused more on uh, digital production and also the content of what is it people are producing and putting out there. Um, And so that, you know, that is what True Kids One has been doing. Media Savvy Citizens, um, on the other hand, has been working with teachers to to elevate learning, to connect the teachers to um, like embed media literacy competencies and digital literacy competencies for learning in the classroom, through, you know, as to elevate that subject matter um, content. And so it's a little, it's a different approach. And they, I think they both have value mm-hmm. and, you know, and how, you know, students are interacting with media, whether it's in school or whether they're, it's, you know, through a production or whether it's like, you know, creating a, um, a, a, a like a little podcast, um, you know, there are different ways. And so it's pretty comprehensive, you know, between Media Savvy Citizens and True Kids One. And then, of course, um, I also teaching through UNM and digital skills um, training. And I know we're running out of time, so I'm not going to say much about that. But if you looked me up, that you can find it information. Mm. Cool. Okay. Well, thanks for everything you're doing and, and all your engagement in the community, uh, especially on this topic, which isn't one that we've spoken about. So thanks for giving us a little introduction to all the things there are to think about. And hopefully we'll stay in touch um, as the landscape continues to evolve, you know, in that direction. But hopefully, as you mentioned, maintaining that sense of uh, eye contact and real life interaction as well. So again, thanks so much for your time. Thank you so much, Miles. Thanks for having me. Paso a paso. <laughs> Podcast. Mm-hmm.